Welcome to the Basilica of Our Lady Immaculate, a beacon of faith and history nestled in the heart of Guelph, Ontario, Canada. My name is Daniel, and before I hand things over to Joe and Julian, let me tell you about our time together. Today, we embark on a musical journey through the soul of this sacred space, guided by the harmonious echoes of its remarkable pipe organ. Crafted with meticulous care in 1919, this masterpiece is the work of the renowned Cassavant Frère of St. Hyacinth, Quebec. A symbol of devotion and artistry, it stands as a testament to the legacy of a family deeply rooted in the tradition of organ building. Housing 2,950 pipes across 51 ranks, each component of this organ has been designed to create a celestial symphony capable of lifting hearts and spirits. The stop list, a core aspect of its design, was meticulously planned by Claver Cassavant, a visionary who carried the torch of his father Joseph Cassavant and brother Samuel Cassavant's pioneering spirit. Encased in medium Danish oak, the console harmonizes with the organ's case, creating a visual and auditory experience that is both grand and intimate. With three manuals of 61 notes and a pedal board of 30 notes, the organist commands this majestic instrument with precision and grace, evoking powerful emotions through music. Behind every note played on this historic organ is a story of dedication and passion. The Cassavant Frere organ in the Basilica of Our Lady Immaculate is not just an instrument. It is a living, breathing entity that connects us to the past, enriches our present, and inspires our future. Now let us venture into the heart of this grand instrument alongside Julian, our assistant organist and choir master, for a perspective unseen from the outside. Within, you'll gain a profound understanding of the organ's vastness and discover the origins of its diverse tonal palette. Before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more fantastic episodes of music at the Basilica of Our Lady Immaculate. Okay, so here's the climb up the ladder. We'll get up to the grate in just a minute. So starting off, we have the low pressure reservoir here. And then one level up, we have the high pressure reservoir. Now we are up at the top. Here you can see the big 16 foot open wood at the back there. You look up, there's the rose window. And this is the great division. to the other side. And now, going through this door, we'll turn on the light first we will move into the swell. As you can see, this division is enclosed. You can see the shutters here.
to the other side. Now moving back through the door here, we go back towards the grate and we're going to cross and move into that little door there, which is the choir division. And it is a little bit perilous. You have to hang over that gap there and we have to land on that bench there. So here we go. Now we are inside and you can again see that this division two is enclosed. You can see the shutters. So here we are looking at the 16 foot open wood. These are the largest pipes on the organ. And we saw the top of them earlier up in the Great Division. If we look up, you can see how the pipes go right up to the top. Let us now check in with organist and choir master Joe at the console for a close up demonstration of the sounds of the organ and the working of the console. Well, thank you, Daniel, and thank you, Julian, for that lovely introduction, and Julian, for your tour inside. Um, I'm going to start to go through a little bit of the stop list here. Um, with Julian inside, we had the raw sound of the pipes right in the chamber. Now I've got the microphones on the outside, so you can hear it dispersed a little bit into the space. So I'll start with the grate. Uh, the softest stop on the grate which we have is the Gems Horn, dying pace and string like, very soft, nice and gentle. And then if we move up to the open dying pace and number two, which is the softer of the two. Diapason 2 uh, shares the facade on this side of the facade. Uh, we have the open diapason 1, which is a big, uh, big diapason, which is on, shares the facade on this side of the organ. Very big diapason. We have a 16 foot.
foot diapason, which shares a little bit of the Bordone in the pedal, but other than that, it is independent inside the organ. Four foot. Two foot, fifteenth. If we add that with the eight, four, and the two, the organ plenum sound. Mixture, three ranks, tears tuned. With the open diapason one, the big one. have a nice wooden whole flute here. Now the whole flute and the harmonic flute, the, the great and the choir share wind pressures of high and low pressure. Uh, the high pressure being just shy of eight inches of wind and the low pressure um, four and a half to five inches of wind. Um, so if we, the whole flute, we do have that under tremulant as well, since they do share pressures to the great and the choir, we're able to add a tremulant, and this is one gorgeous stop with a tremulant. If we were to add strings, Of course, the same with the harmonic flute, which is metal. Without the tremulant, a 16-foot diapase in which does borrow a little bit of the board on from the pedal but other than that it is independent in behind the mirror aside from that we do have the tromba which is also on the high pressure side And the chimes are also available on the grade as well. Uh, moving to the pedal, which is also on this side, we have the open diapase and the big open diapase, which is against the back wall.
show up as well in the recording, but it is pretty big. Uh, an extension of that to the bass flute, eight foot. And then if we go to the board arm, which is independent right behind here, And it is also borrowed from the 16 foot in the swell from the Bordeaux. Nice soft stop. Works well with the strings. The 8 foot stop diapason is an extension of the Bordeaux 16, which is independent, also right behind. cello which is also right behind the mirror here uh, the 16 foot trombone which is on this side which is large scale to this side now, the swell in the choir. All right, over to the left side, we'll start with the choir. Um, quite a colorful choir division. Reeds, strings, flutes, and um, a little bit of everything, really. We'll start with the strings. This organ is quite well known for its strings. We'll start with the dulciana, which is the quietest stop on the choir. Celeste, the old Celeste. With the high pressure viola orchestra. Lovely Celeste sound in there. We have a nice wooden melodia. Pressure tremulant with that to give it the presence. A little fast, but not too bad. The violin diapason, which is in the back wall of the choir box. Pretty decent scale as it is mitered over. Flato Dolce wooden, which is just absolutely gorgeous on high pressure. With the high pressure tremulant. Two foot piccolo. Piccolo things. Clarinet, which is absolutely gorgeous. We have a French horn. It's actually 1919 Austin French horn, which did replace. Uh, the orchestral oboe, which was originally in the specs, but it was very unstable stop. And since we do have a nice oboe in the swell already, um, the French horn became available at restoration time. So we thought we would take a gamble, and it's on the high pressure side, and it seems to have paid off. It's a lovely stop, um, adding to the color of the choir division. <laughs> from 
from the grate is available on the choir as well. Moving up to the swell, um, probably one of the most nicest swell divisions I've ever had the pleasure of playing. We'll start again with the strings. The aeolian, which is the softest stop on this organ. We'll add it with the box celeste. Now with the gamma. fire up those strings with the choir strings together. Super octave on the swell. Super octave on the choir. Sub octave for both. glory. Uh, moving on now, one of the other nicer stops on the swell division is the stop die pace and lovely wooden stop. Sitting right beside the open die pace, not too obtrusive. completely independent inside the small box from the stop gate. The stop gate is not a, an extension of the board on 16. They are two independent stops completely. Uh, four foot traverse flute, wooden. Also nice with the tremulant. Horn. Flautino two foot doing Flautino things. And a Dolce Cornet of three rings, which is absolutely just subtle. Nice combination with the two foot, Plotino, the Bordone 16, a little bit of tremulant and a little bit of accompaniment and a little bit of pedal. We have Vox Humana. Let's put the tremulant. Mix with the strings. There's a solo. Oh, oh. 
and a cornopian. does complement nicely with the tromba for a call and response type effect. Um, moving from there, now we're up to, uh, we'll explain some of the couplers here. So the couplers will allow me to transfer manuals or say bring a sound from the swell down to say the great and even down to the choir division. We can change those around. I can also bring down the super octave throughout, even down to here. We can take the unison pitch off, with the swell unison off, and we could say add the super octave and the, and the swell sub, the sub octave, and it leaves out the middle octave. And with the tremulant, you can get quite an effect. Also, uh, we allow me to bring the, the manual stops also down to the pedal. So we can take, um, let's say if we had a full, uh, let's see, if we had a fuller type swell, I can also bring that down to the pedal, swell to pedal. If people come up to me and say, the organ's too loud or something like that. And uh, I take these couplers and I put them all on just so that the people know that I'm thinking about them when they say that it's too loud. So as a tip as an organist, if they tell you it's too loud, add more couplers. It just helps to, lets them know you're thinking about them, sort of, sort of thing. So um, that's basically the layout of the console. The digital display on this side um, is basically to, to let me know which uh, memory level I'm on. There are 250 memory levels with 12, uh, 12 generals, six divisionals per, for each division. And those are duplicated also on toe studs below. And the pedal is also, the pedal presets, uh, pistons, are also duplicated down as foot studs, uh, toe studs as well. Uh, we also have a couple of accessory stops for the trombone 32, reversible, and the double open 32 is a reversible. The full organ is on a reversible. And there's a balanced crescendo pedal here, which is programmable up to many different levels, depending on what you want. The crescendo will allow me to play absolutely nothing all the way up to. Without actually pulling out any stops. So that's, that's uh, what that allows for there. Uh, the chimes are also available in the choir division. That pretty much covers the, the tour of the console. Let us listen now to Julian as he plays Sibelius's Finlandia. The full resources of the organ are displayed in this magnificent piece. As our journey within the resonant chambers of this historic organ concludes, we step back into the light, carrying with us the echoes of a timeless symphony. Through the skillful guidance of Julian, our sub-organist and choir master, we've traversed the intricate labyrinth of pipes and keys that give life to this monumental instrument. It's a rare privilege to witness the inner workings of such a masterpiece, to understand the precision and care invested in each note that fills the basilica's sacred space. With the in-depth guidance of our titular organist and choir master Joe, we have heard with both our ears and eyes how the organist makes these sounds to be. Since the dedication of this historic organ by Joseph Bonnet in the fall of 1919, this Cassavant Frere organ, a crown jewel of craftsmanship and musical heritage, stands not merely as an instrument, but as a bridge connecting generations. Its voices, ranging from the thunderous roar of the bass pipes to the celestial whisper of the trebles, encapsulate the spectrum of human emotion and spiritual aspiration. Here, within these hallowed walls, we've discovered not just the source of the organ's diverse colors, but the heart 
of its enduring legacy. As we conclude our tour, let us carry forward the memory of this experience, a reminder of the beauty that human hands and hearts can create. The melodies that resonate from the Basilica of Our Lady Immaculate are a testament to the enduring power of music to uplift, to heal, and to unite. Thank you for joining us on this voyage of discovery and reflection. May the music you've encountered inspire your path forward, echoing in your steps long after our parting. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more fabulous music and episodes from music at the Basilica of Our Lady Immaculate. I'm your host, Daniel, and we hope to see you soon.